Yo, what's good? Welcome to another show. I'm Sid and today I'm going to be showing you how to add a background image and scale it and rotate it and just kind of animate it behind you. It's pretty simple stuff. There's not really anything crazy going on here, but I always get messages from people asking about super simple tutorials to go along with some of the other stuff that I'm making. So I thought I'd try and balance it out here while I'm recording a couple of videos. There should be a preview on screen that you can see right now. And if you enjoy the content, if you find this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel because I do put out videos pretty often as much as I can. And yeah, let's just jump straight into it. So we've already got our project set up. Uh, we've got 2D mode here so you can see me twice and I've got my patch editor open. I also, if we scroll over to my desktop, we have this image that I found on Google. It's a nice repeating pattern with some floral print, uh, pretty sweet. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to drag that here into my assets panel. Okay, so now we've got that, I'm going to right click on our scene and add a plane. I'm going to scale that up from 1 on the X to 10. I'm going to do the same on the Y axis and I'm going to leave it at 1 on the Z axis. So now if I zoom out, you'll see we have a plane that's much bigger than the actual frame that we're using. So if I make this invisible, you'll see how small the area is that we're actually working with. And then the plane sits on top of that, taking up all that space and even some more outside. Now we're going to add a material here. I'm going to rename the plane to background and I'm going to rename this material to background mat. And I'm going to add our floral pattern here as a diffuse texture. Now you can see it printed. You're only seeing about this much of it though, which is exactly what I want. Next, we're going to right click in here again and I'm going to add a rectangle. I'm going to rename this to person and then we can fill the width and fill the height. So that covers the entire screen. You can now kind of see how much area of the plane that we're seeing. Next, we're going to add a new material. I'm going to rename this to person mat. And now we're going to head up here to the camera in our scene and hit this plus button for texture extraction, which will extract this camera texture down here and hit this one for segmentation. And we want a person segmentation. You see those both down here. Now we can select our person mat and I'm going to change the shader type from standard to flat. And next, we're going to add our camera texture here, which will project the original camera onto this new layer. And now I'm going to check this box here for the alpha and add our person segmentation, which will cut out the background so we can now see the plane behind us and I'm projected on top of it, which is pretty cool. You will notice some edge blur around here, though. It's not looking too great. So we're going to head down to the person segmentation mask here and I'm just going to adjust the edge softness, bring that down to about 95. So it's a little bit of a harder edge and I'm going to increase the mask size to about 2.6. I find works pretty well but you can play around with these values until you're happy with the result. You can take this plane and you can actually move it around. So if you want a different part of the image to be behind you, you can play around with that as well. You can scale it up even more, scale it down, up to you. Next, we're gonna add some interaction though. So we have our patch editor open in here. What I'm gonna do is double tap and add a loop animation. Drag out from progress, connect that to a transition. And now we're gonna take our plane and we're gonna connect the scale here. So create a patch for your scale and we are going to get that connected up. But by default, you see here it starts at zero. So we're going to change that to 10 on the X, 10 on the Y, one on the Z. So that it's the default values that we've set here. That's our start range. And then I'm going to increase it to 12.5, 12.5, and I'll leave the Z axis at one. Now we're going to connect this value to this scale and you'll see it start to scale up. I'm going to hit this box here for mirror, which means that rather than starting from scratch every time it hits the top, it's just going to loop back on in itself, kind of pulse in and out. And I'm also going to change the duration here from one second to around 7.5. I think that works. Now you're seeing a little bit of a slower increase and decrease of scale. I think it's pretty nice though, looking kind of cool. Now we're going to do the same thing for the rotation. So we're going to add a second loop animation here, connect out from that and add a transition. And now we want to add our rotation. And this time we're going to change every value to zero except for the first one on the Z axis. And we're gonna change that to 360. And now if I connect up here, then what we get is this crazy spinning uh, where it's going from 360 degrees all the way to zero. So it's spinning clockwise very, very quickly. I'm gonna slow that down as well. We'll make that 7.5, maybe a little slower, 15. You can play around with this. I think maybe you can go even as slow as 100 because the plane itself is so large, it takes a little while to spin around. So you can probably bring that to about 50 seconds, have it looking nice. I'm not gonna mirror this. I'm just gonna let it spin all the way around because a 360 degree cycle is a circle anyway. And I'd rather it didn't go counterclockwise at the end. But yeah, that's uh, basically the whole effect. 
honestly, there's not much more to it. I can spin this around and you'll get a little bit of a better view. If we wanted, we could come down to our background material. We could turn on the emission here and we can add a different color. That will change the actual color of our background. You can play around with these values. That's pretty good, I guess. Uh, and you can also turn on this specular range here, change the texture to a color and it will change things even more. So now you can just play around with these and create all kinds of trippy visuals. Uh, something like that, maybe. Oh, orange. I thought orange looked kind of nice before. And then, yeah, you can adjust the smoothness on this. So if you bring this all the way up, it will just get rid of the orange. Uh, and if you have it at around maybe 10, then you'll get this nice glow around the edge, which honestly, I think, although for a simple effect, I think this came out pretty well. It looks kind of cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. There's not much more to this video. It's very simple. Basically just me showing how scale and rotation work, uh, connecting things up to a loop animation and showing you how you can animate very simple backgrounds to create kind of cool trippy effects. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video, what you want to see next time. I appreciate your feedback and yeah, your support really helps the channel. With all that being said, I'm going to bring this video to a close. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.